guys, welcome to my channel again, Joe Jaguar, and I just want to show you this guy here. Um, so what I thought, the reason why I uh, got this guy is, as you saw the other video, I have had a 4-inch F5 short tube refractor, that uh, little black one. Um, actually, they come in different colors. Sometimes it's Skywatcher used to make them in a dark blue, light blue, Celestron in black. That one is like a black diamond, has little tiny white diamond uh, flecks on it. But anyway, um, so I, I showed you guys what I use that guy for and what it's popular for. But I just found this guy. Now it looks like it's ca carbon fiber, but it's not. It's just a somebody wrapped it in carbon uh, fiber, like a, I don't know, wallpaper type of thing or a coating. So it's not real carbon fiber, but that's okay. So anyway, so I thought of I picked this guy up because then I might let the other one go and keep this guy. Um, this is actually this company is not really known in uh, like North American, Canada, U.S. Uh, it's called K Son K S O N. I think it's more of a European type of name, uh, maybe even Russian type of name, um, and it's a 102. So this is again the same size as that other Skywatcher one I showed you last time. 102, 4 inch. Instead of being F5, this one is F6.8. So, or 700 millimeter focal length, the other one was 500. So it's very, it's similar. This one has a bit more power, um, but it's not going to be as wide. It's still going to be semi wide, but not as wide. So, um, again, um, the other one was 500, this one's 700. So it's not much different. So it's still a medium format. So let's just say, for instance, what would be the difference if, if this um, is a regular doublet Acromat, sorry, yeah, Acromat, and then compared to a 4-inch F5 Acromat? I would say this being F6.8 and that one being, the other one being F5, color correction is probably going to be about 20% better because it's a little bit longer. The colors are going to have more time to come to a focus point. So um, that's what you get. Just by getting a longer version tube, the color correction will be better. So I would say this one, let's say, uh, in this size, um, compared to the other guy, um, I think I put it away. Actually, let me, just give me 10 seconds. I, I didn't put it away. Um, still got it right here. So, I'm going to show you guys side by side. So here it is. So that's the one I showed you guys last time and I'll try to put it. So that's 4 inch F5. Uh, or up here, 4 inch F5. And this is a 4 inch F6.8. Um, okay. So again, color correction in this guy, if everything's the same, it's going to be about 20% uh, better than, uh, than this guy. Um, of course, as you can see, then it's a little bit longer and it's not as portable. That's normal. So you got to kind of pick what you want in a telescope. There is no one does everything. There's just no way. Okay. But, and as you can see, my red uh, shirt matches the red trim here, the red bar. Now, what is, this is actually a step up at least, if not two steps up from that one. As you can see, the bar uh, is just a better bar. The rings are, you know, like uh, uh, heavy duty rings where the other one were just regular uh, Skywatcher rings um, type of thing. Um, so it obviously costs more. And here's another feature, let me show you guys, that you normally cost more to have a scope do this. So it has a sliding do cap. So for portability, now let's now let's look at it. So with it, it's it's just about four inches less now. Of course, this do cap is fixed on this guy, and this one, when you're traveling with it, you as you saw, it shrinks about seven eight inches. So like that kind of looks a little long. It's kind of it's a medium format, but for portability when you travel with it, there you go. So that's normally a feature that costs more. So, of course, this is why I said this is a much better version than that. Um, and it does have like uh, the 
cap here. So if you wanted to, you could probably again put, if you got solar film filter, you can glue it or hot glue it is what I normally do to the inside. And now you have a solar filter that you can view the sun. Uh, so this just snaps in like that. Now there's another really good feature about this and the reason why I got it. So uh, actually two more things. Let me explain. The focuser on this guy is just much better than that other one. The other one was a uh, single speed Crayford. But even if that one had a dual speed Crayford, this one already, um, this one already has a dual speed uh, focuser as you could, oh, I'm too close. So as you can see there, the, the black one is uh, the rough or coarse focuser and the gold one is the fine focuser. So this is also, let me show you this guy, the focuser can rotate. So usually that's on more expensive um, and that's for more, you know, to put you in a better viewing uh, position or for astrophotography imaging. So <clears throat> the last thing why this is a better scope, I mean, let's just talk about, go back to that. Just that focus or alone. If you got a scope like that one or uh, the older two inch focusers that come in cheaper scopes and you upgrade to a Chinese uh, Crayford dual speed, those are 200 bucks before tax. So 230 Canadian with tax. And th those are the, the base, that's the baseline. Uh, that's not even top line. This one I would say is more like a medium quality focuser. It's not high end. Uh, there is maybe medium high and then high end. So this is much better focuser. So this focuser if you were to buy, let's say if you had a regular cheaper refractor that just came with a rack and pinion and you wanted to upgrade to something like this, probably would cost you minimum 300 bucks, 350 new type of thing. Uh, again, those features being it rotates um, and dual speed and just the quality fields. Again, I, I, I felt more better ones in a more high end, but it, you know, for this price range, uh, it was pretty good. Now, I just picked up this guy. Uh, it was from my friend again from uh, Markernian uh, Fine Optics in BC, and I bought it for like 440 So again, it's Almost the same, same size as that guy. Instead of being 400 millimeter, this guy is, what is it, 700? I believe it's, yes, yeah, 700 millimeter. So 300 millimeter more, but has a sliding dew cap. So once you do that, it's almost the same size. It's not going to be as wild, wide as field, but it's still going to be fairly wide. Uh, 6.8 is still considered... You know, um, I, I would say fast, what they call it, or wide uh, type of thing. So it is semi-wide still. Uh, maybe it can't capture as much as that one. But remember, the color correction is going to be at least 20% if it's just they're both uh, doublets uh, type of thing. Focuser is just two steps better than that guy at least. So just a focuser alone probably would almost cost the whole thing, okay? Again, I said I picked up, this was used for 440 uh, type of thing. So just that focuser is probably 80% of the whole thing. That's why I got it, because it's just a great buy. Again, you're getting better dovetail, heavy duty rings instead of the basic rings. So just that there is worth it. Now there is one more thing though, that why it's a much better quality. This is not a, um, regular doublet. Well, it is a doublet, but it, it's using, this is what they would call a ED, semi-apple chromatic, or um, almost a apple chromatic. So what do I mean? Is it, It's using, this is the first generation after that guy, they went and made better lenses, and this comes with the FPL 51. Now, in some of those other videos that you saw, like my Takahashi, the Skywatcher, Evo Star, some of those other ones, um, those are the 53 glass, which is the best glass. This one's the 51 glass, it's a little less, but it's much better than that guy, the, the other one I showed you. So this one's like a ED, or almost like a semi-apochromatic. Uh, okay, so what I said is if, if these were equal, let me grab this guy again. If these are equal, and they're just doublets, acromats, 
Color correction, because this one is just longer, should be about 20%. Now that you guys know this is an FPL 51, it's like a semi apochromatic so it's like in between. So if you can't, if you want something better than the basic stuff, but you can't afford the apple chromatic, you know, with the 53 glass, you can get one in 51 glass. Uh, it does a fairly good job. Now, the color correction now, that it's longer and it's using the better glass, is probably going to be about, uh, sorry, 70% um, now is going to take it. This will probably be 20, and with that glass, it's probably another 50% better color correction, image, contrast. So if you add them two together, that guy is probably going to be about 70% better color and image than this guy. So, that's why I picked it up. And it could shrink. I like the rings. I like the bar. I like the focuser type of thing. So, um, that guy probably on the used market would probably get about 200 bucks Canadian. Uh, so, it's about almost half price of this guy. But this one just comes with better features. If I were to put a focuser again of this quality on that guy... Probably going to cost me three three fifty if it's new. So there's no point upgrading that guy. It's just better just to get, uh, and it's not going to have the, um, you know, it's not going to have the better glass. It's not going to have the uh, sliding dew cap. So there's just no point. Sometimes you just, if you want to upgrade, like don't upgrade your old gear. Just get something that comes with it. So for people that are looking for, um, now what would this be good for? So on that one, I told you what that's good for. So if you want to see a little bit of everything, so you want to see the planets in much better detail than the other one, the short tube version, this will give you a lot better image quality in this type of guy. But it's still, again, not that long, not that heavy, just another two pounds, I would guess, uh, heavier, maybe three pounds, something like that. I'm just guessing. I haven't weighed them. Um, so it's a little bit heavier, but not much more. You shouldn't notice it. Um, so if you want to see the, the planets, uh, the sun, moon, in better detail, better quality, this would be better going to a 51 glass over a just doublet, a doublet acromat. Uh, and then with a better focuser and everything else. So uh, you could also use it again for terrestrial viewing, land viewing. Except it's not going to be quite as wide. It still would be wide. If you put a 2 inch diagonal in there. A 2 inch 32 like you might need. Super wide angle 4000 um, eyepiece in there. It still would be fairly big. Just not quite as big as that one. So if you want a scope that's better on the planets. Better image. And you can still do the terrestrial viewing in the daytime. And you can still do almost all the wide field of the Milky Way and scanning. Then this is better for that. So you heard what the other one is good for and not good for. If you're interested in more of astronomy stuff. And then once in a while you might look at daytime stuff. Then this is a much better build uh, a scope for you uh, type of thing. And if you didn't even want to do any... Um, uh, you know, if you, if you didn't want to do any day, daytime, that's fine too. Uh, for people then that want a better quality, even better image quality, better color correction than this guy, then you get one this size, could be even a little longer, in the 53 glass, which is the best one. And then better than that would be a triplet 53. Uh, like the Takahashi, is just when I compared it to the Skywatcher Evo Star, it just, there's no comparison. It's like a Hyundai to a Ferrari. It, 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 any car will get you to A and B, but if you just want the best, you know, you, you got to pay for it though. But again, this guy was not too expensive. Like I said, 400, maybe new would probably be about eight to 900 bucks is what I think. Maybe even a thousand with this type of focuser uh, type of thing. The 53, like the Evo Star, um, that's about 1300 bucks. Uh, although with this virus going on, it's changing the dollar all the time, so it's hard to keep up. Uh, so it might even be more. But again, I would say 900 to 1000 bucks new. I got it for 440 and I'll probably replace it with that. It's a much better planetary scope. Still could do the daytime and the wide scanning fairly well. I would say about 80% as well as the other guy. So if you want something and you want to use it for astronomy, this is a much better uh, type of thing. 
Um, yeah, so I just wanted to show you guys what that is uh, about. If you're interested, that way you guys kind of know a little bit. If you are thinking of getting a refractor, which one would be better? Now you have two different videos to say, okay, I think I want to do one that does that like that, or I want no one that does the planets better uh, type of thing. So you kind of understand that a little bit more. That's it for this video. See you on the next uh, video. Subscribe, comment, like. See you next time.